designs of his heart are from age to age to rescue their souls from death and keep them alive in famine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Send to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who glory in the heart of your beloved Son and recall the wonders of his love for us may be made worthy to receive an overflowing measure of grace from that font of heavenly gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Reading from the book of, of Tobit, Tobit's wife, Anna, sat looking intently down the road by which her son survived from. When she caught sight of him coming, she said to his father, Look, your son is coming, and the man who went with him. Raphael said to Tobias, before he had approached his father, I know that his eyes will be opened, smear the gall of the fish on his eyes. The medicine will make the white films shrink and peel off from his eyes, and your father will regain his sight and see the light. Then Anna ran up to her son and threw her arms around him, saying, Now that I have seen you, my child, I am ready to die. And she wept. Then Tobit caught up and came stumbling out through the courtyard door. Tobias went up to him. With the call of the fish in his hand, and holding him firmly, he blew into his eyes, saying, Take courage, Father. With this, he applied the medicine on his eyes, and it made them smart. Next, with both hands, he peeled up the white films from the corners of his eyes. Then Tobit saw his son and threw his arms around him, and, re and he wept and said to him, I see you, my son, the light of my eyes. Then Tobit said, Blessed be God, and blessed be his great name, and blessed be all his holy angels. May his holy name be blessed throughout all the ages. Though, though he afflicted me, he has, he, has, he, has had, he has had mercy upon me. Now I see my son Tobias. The word of the Lord. Responsorial psalm, let our response be, Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Praise the Lord, my soul. It is the Lord who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord loves the righteous. 
but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord, my soul. Alleluia, Alleluia. All who love me will keep my words, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. While Jesus was teaching in the temple, he said, How can the scribes say to that the Christ is the son of David? David himself, by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself called him Lord. How can he be his son? And the crowds was listening to him with delight. The Gospel of the Lord. Really encourage you to take some time and just simply read the entire story of Tobit. It's a it's a wonderful story in the in the Bible. It contains so many things we just kind of get snippets of it as it goes along, but it's really it's really one of the most uh, beautiful uh, stories in the Old Testament. It just it takes through this whole life of a very good, devoted man who gets struck of his, he loses his eyes and then he becomes a jerk, <laughs> and and uh, and his wife chastises him about it, and and then there's this whole connection with the angel Raphael. Oh, it's just a wonderful story. I, I really encourage take the time read the entire book of Tobit. It's not very long, but it's wonderful uh, to read. Um, today we see this uh, just kind of a fascinating thing, uh, for me anyways, where uh, Tobias, the son of Tobit, he uh, is to heal his father of his blindness. And the angel says to him, go up and smear the um, gall on the father's eye and then Rip the, rip the, <laughs> the white film off, and so, but Tobias does something kind of interesting. He goes up to his father, grabs him, blows into his eyes, and then smears the gall on his eyes. It's not what the angel told him to do. Well, except for the smearing the gall thing, he did that. But why? Why did he blow into his father's eyes? What's the, what's the reasoning behind him blowing into his father's eyes? No idea. But I also know that often you and I don't fully trust the remedies of God. We might believe that something else kind of has to be added into them. You know, that God's remedies are not enough on its own. It's a, I think it's a constant temptation for us that what, what exactly is the remedy of God? You know, prayer, these kind of things. And we start to take some of the remedies into our own hands that we ourselves are going to bring about the work of God better than God. Um, of course, God works through our gifts and talents, but I think it's something that we have to be uh, concerned about. You know, sometimes we feel like, well, if I make the prayer a little longer, then God's going to listen. Well, the power doesn't come from the length of the prayer, but of the intention of the heart and, and the desire of God to answer the prayer in, in the way that he sees uh, fit of it. 
And so it's important for us to, to look at ourselves and our lives. What are the areas that we're not trusting in God, that God is going to act? Raphael told him, of course he doesn't know it's the Archangel Raphael, but he tells him this is what's going to happen. And Tobias had this experience. He had the experience with the demon. Exactly what, what Raphael said. He had the experience all throughout his journeys. Everything Raphael said came true. But then it's common for us to enter into the presence of God, to encounter the remedies of God, and to doubt. To not think it's quite going to work. Better add a little something to it. And so let us ask for that great faith to trust God in his remedies. That's what the Archangel Raphael means, God's remedy in our lives. Today, too, we also encounter just kind of a similar thing, right, where Jesus shows to them some aspect of Scripture, where he said, well, how can the Messiah be the son of David if David has called him Lord? Now, we know that Jesus is actually the son of of King David, per se, because Joseph is from the line of King David, and so, you know, they, they look at the office, but it gives us some beautiful insights into Scripture and also into offices. You know, some people say, well, Francis can't be Peter, because Peter was given that title, you know, 2,000 years ago, whereas Francis is, is you know, 266 uh, down the line of Peter. But we see that that's how offices work, that, you know, Joseph was David for that time. So for Jesus to be the son of Joseph was for him to be also the son of David. Just like Francis um, for us is Peter for us. He's, he's in that office. And we too have to trust in God's remedy for these things. You know that God is the one who guarantees these powers. It's not us giving a little zip to them, but God doing that. And so let us pray to increase our faith in God, that God is the true remedy for the different aspects of our life. Dear brothers and sisters, gathered as one to celebrate the good things we have received from our God, let us ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. We pray for our Holy Father Francis, for Pope Emeritus Benedict, for our Bishop Joseph, for their health, intentions, and constant growth in faith, hope, and charity. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray to trust in your remedies in our lives, that you are God, and that you love us, and that you have great plans and a great mission for each and every one of us. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for continued healing uh, in our parish, in our church, uh, especially um, 
by those who have been hurt by the church in different uh, situations, residential schools, hypocrisy, or sexual abuse, for God's great remedy to be upon all of us. For this we pray to the Lord. Pray for the sick and the dying, those who will die today, those in most need of the mercy of God, especially those struggling with fear and anxiety, great confusion in their life, addictions, uh, those overcome with hatred and anger, those with suicidal thoughts and tendencies. For God's healing hand to be upon them, for this we pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray that we can be attentive to the atrocities that are happening today in our very midst, especially the atrocities of abortion and euthanasia. Uh, for those people in our own countries and around the world that do not have sufficient food and uh, clean water, those who are deprived of family life um, through violence or hatred or even government agencies, Pray, Lord, to keep our eyes open. For this we pray to the Lord. This Mass we pray in a special way for Spencer Gray. For this we pray to the Lord. In the moment of silence, we offer up our own prayers and petitions. pray to the Lord. And we pray for all the holy souls in purgatory, and we ask them to join us with the saints and angels in heaven, especially St. Joseph, our blessed mother, to pray for more vocations to the priesthood, to the consecrated life and to holy matrimony, to preserve all those in their vocations and assist us in our universal call to holiness. For this, we pray to the Lord. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merit. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O 
merciful Lord, we pray on the surpassing charity in this heart of your most beloved Son, that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you and an expiation of our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For raised up high on the cross, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love and poured out blood and water from his pure side, the wellsprings of the church's sacrament. And so that, won over to the open heart of the Savior, all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fond of all holiness. Holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. By Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
one of the soldiers opened his side with a lance, and at once came forth blood and water. Let us pray. May this sacrament of charity, O Lord, make us fervent with the fire of holy love, so that, drawn always to your Son, we may learn to see him in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.